guys and welcome back to the channel. So I get a lot of messages from you guys regarding what's required or how to do a D16Y8 swap into an EF chassis. But because of all those messages that I get and having to repeat myself so many times, I decided in today's video, I'm going to be covering what's required to swap a D16Y8 into an EF chassis. Now, all this information that I'm going to be providing to you guys is going to be based off the fact that you have an SI model or you're already converted to multi-point fuel injection. If you aren't converted yet, you're going to have to do an additional step by converting to multi-point fuel injection, which is required for the D16Y8. Now let's get started by talking about the parts required. So the first part, which is the most important part, is the D16Y8 engine. Now let's talk about the engine for a sec here. There are many versions of the D16Y8 out there. The best version to be swapping into the car is a 96 to 98 manual D16Y8. You can use a automatic, but you will have to swap some manual parts over to that. You'll need an intake manifold, IACV, and a throttle body from a manual D16Y8. The automatic stuff does not work. Now you can also run a 99 to 2000 D16Y8, but again, the intake manifold is where there's a change. The 992000 uh, D16Y8 has some air injection holes in the intake manifold, which if you run as is, will cause the idle to be really weird. Now you can fix the situation by one, plugging those holes in the 99 to 2000 intake manifold, or two, swapping to a 96 to 98 manual intake manifold. Um, another thing that's a little bit different about the 99 to 2000 is the distributor, which is a OBD2B distributor. It does not have a blue tack wire in there. So you will need to add that wire. It is virtually the same as the OBD2A, it's just missing that one wire. If you don't add that wire, you're not gonna have a tack. Now, again, I'm just gonna say this again, the best version of the D16Y8 to be using is a 96 to 98 manual D16Y8. So onto the transmission, the easiest option for a transmission is using your existing cable transmission. Um, if you find yourself an SI transmission, that's even better if you don't already have one. Now, this is the best time to actually swap out your clutch and flywheel. What you would do is buy parts matching to your transmission. So if it's an SI cable transmission, buy the clutch and flywheel for the SI transmission. Now, that being said, you can run a Y8 transmission, which is the better transmission, but you will need a conversion kit for that. Now, as for your axles, you'd retain the stock EF axles that came with your car. All right, so another thing that you wanna retain is this driver side side post mount from your original engine. The Y8 one will not work. So if you are not running a Y8 transmission as well, and you're running the cable transmission, your original engine mounts will also work. So there are four engine mounts, one here, one in the back there, and one on the side, and one in the front here. Now, if you are to buy new engine mounts, you could just buy them for a EF Civic. So your original engine mounts will work. All right, so another thing is the throttle cable here. This is a original SI throttle cable. You can retain your original throttle cable or buy a D16Y8 throttle cable. If you retain your original throttle cable, you will have to modify it for it to lengthen to work on the D16Y8, which is what I have done. Now onto engine harness. Now you wanna retain the existing engine harness from your existing motor. The reason being is it plugs directly into your chassis. You also do need the D16Y8 engine harness, but that is a lot less important than your original engine harness. Now, I can't stress this enough, retain your existing engine harness. Another thing worth mentioning is retain the uh, upper radiator water neck from your original engine as well. This has the proper angle for your upper radiator hose. Um, you can use the D16Y8 one, but it is angled a little bit differently. This is a perfect angle for how it was existing. All right, so with alternator, you wanna retain your existing alternator from your original engine. The reason being is this will plug right into your engine harness. You can run the D16Y8 one, but you will have to cut the plug and wire a D16Y8 plug onto it, which is a lot more work. It's not really plug and play. With this, all you have to do is run a belt with one less rib. That's all you have to do. This fits perfectly. The belt you have to run for the alternator if you're running your original alternator is a 3PK785 belt, which is the belt that I'm using right now. You can also use a D16Y8 belt and just cut one of the ribs off of it and it will also work on your original alternator. So with the distributor, you will need to run a jumper harness 
from OBD0 to OBD2A or OBD2B. So you either have to buy the harness or make one. That way it could be plug and play, plugging from your original engine harness to the distributor. Now, another thing that would be really helpful is if you could get yourself a D16Y8 intake pipe because it has the provision right here for a IAT sensor. Now, if you don't have a D16Y8 intake pipe, you probably don't have the IAT sensor as well. You will need to buy a IAT sensor and maybe make a hole in your existing intake pipe and plug that in there. Um, but if you could get your hands on a D16Y8 intake pipe, that would be perfect because it likely will come with the sensor as well. All right, so another thing that you probably wanna buy is a O2 sensor, which is a four wire O2 sensor if your D16Y8 didn't already come with one. All right, just a couple more parts left, an ECU. I recommend going with a OBD1 P28 ECU, chipped and tuned for the D16Y8. However, you can run any of the OBD1 ECUs and just convert it to VTEC and chip and tune them. Now we're going OBD1 because it bypasses a bunch of the OBD2 sensors, so it reduces some of the wiring that you need to do. And we're going chip and tune because the stock ECU, the stock P28 is made for AZ6. Although the engines are very similar, they're also quite different. So you'll realize as you're driving on a stock map that it is not smooth at all. It'll get smoother at a higher RPM, but throughout the drive, it's just not very smooth. It'll run it okay, but chipping and tuning makes a night and day difference. Now that basically sums up all the parts that's needed to drop the D16Y8 in. However, I do recommend refreshing the motor, um, like changing the water pump, a timing bell, thermostat, all your seals, all that stuff before dropping the motor in, which will add to the parts list, of course. Now that we covered all the parts, let's go and talk about the wiring. All right, so now the wiring. What you want to do is take the existing engine harness from your original motor and start plugging all the plugs into the D16Y8. Majority of them will plug right in with the exception of a few. All right, let's start with the map sensor here. Now, the original map sensor is on the firewall. You can run that map sensor. However, it's cleaner to run the one on the throttle body of the D16Y8. Running this map sensor will require you to lengthen the wiring to the map sensor. Now, you can just lengthen it and still use the existing plug, or you could just swap it over to the newer style plug like what I did here. Next is the IAT sensor. We briefly mentioned this earlier. Now the IAT sensor goes onto the intake pipe. Now you can cut a hole in your existing intake pipe if you don't have the Y8 pipe, and then you just plug the sensor in, but you will need this sensor, and you will have to swap the plug for this because the original sensor on your motor is on the intake manifold. The D16Y8 runs the IAT sensor outside of the manifold. All right, the next thing that you have to switch is this plug here, which is the coolant fan switch. Now this was originally on the back of the motor on the original engine. Now D16Y8 has it on the thermostat. Now you'll have to lengthen the wiring to this location and swap the plug. All right, next is the injectors here. Now, as you can see, I'm running the OBD2 injectors here. If you are running those OBD2 injectors as well, you will have to swap the connectors out from your OBD0 to the OBD2 style. As well, you will need to delete your resistor box. Now, how to delete the resistor box is pretty straightforward. All you do is just solder all the wires together on the resistor box side. Here's the VTEC solenoid and the pressure switch. These are the things that you have to wire that comes from the OBD0 to OBD1 ECU jumper harness. So there'll be wires from there that you have to connect directly to the this plug here for the VTEC solenoid and that green plug right there for the uh, pressure switch. All right, as well, this is the four wire O2 sensor here. You will have to wire that up. Uh, the wires will come from the OBD0 to OBD1 ECU jumper harness. All right, lastly is the distributor harness here. Now, all you have to do is plug in the jumper harness from OBD0 to OBD2A or OBD2B into this connector, and it will be plugged right up. All right, so with the wiring out of the way, we only have to hook up the vacuum lines and the fuel lines. Now, I'll go over this in just very basic terms, but this is all based off of me having the uh, Y8 intake tube. If you don't have this, this will have to be rerouted a different way, obviously. Everyone does it a little bit different. Now... Here, this line here, this black one, goes to the charcoal canister. This line, the black one. Now, this one goes to the valve cover. This is your just fuel pressure. Um, this line here is the fuel return. You'll need a adjustable clamp for that. Um, the stock fuel line is right here. This goes to your fuel filter that fits. Uh, this 
line here goes all the way to the back of the engine to the PCV valve. I've blocked off that port right there. That's your brake booster. This EVAP sensor here, this goes to the back of the manifold and there's a nipple there as well. I blocked off a nipple on the back there. That covers off all the vacuum lines and fuel lines. There you go guys, we've talked about the engine wiring as well as the vacuum lines and we've already discussed all the parts required to get the D16Y8 swapped into a EF chassis. Now, one of the most common mistakes that you guys tend to ask me and you guys make is trying to adapt the D16Y8 engine harness into the EF chassis. That doesn't work that way. It requires a lot more modifications and cutting. Um, I highly recommend starting with your original engine harness, changing out a few plugs or adding a few plugs and then plugging it right in. It's a direct plug and play. As you can see, when I talked about the engine wiring, it's quite straightforward. It's just a few plugs that you have to change up or add and you're done. Um, so that basically covers up the whole D16Y8 swap. Now, if you guys had a choice between a Y8 or a Z6, highly recommend going with a Z6. The Z6 is a far better engine. It is way better built than the Y8 is, and it's a far simpler swap. All you have to do is swap it in, and you will just be able to plug in the P28 without any tuning and drive it because that ECU was made for that engine. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I hope this helps you guys out. If you haven't already, please comment, like, and subscribe, and share my videos. As always, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.